Sci-Fi Surprise Time with first spaceship on Venus. Oh, first I actually have to do something else. I just realized we're looking at our April zombie, and it's May. See what zombie we have next. Woo! Oh! Plants have it. Plants take over May. <laughs> that one's awesome. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Happy times! Uh, hey everyone, Shannon here to talk about Sci-Fi Surprise series time with First Spaceship on Venus. This is the 20th film in my trek through 50 science fiction films from, well, arguably not all science fiction films, the Sci-Fi Classics uh, series from Mill Creek. And uh, this one is from 1960. And it's a German film. It's actually also known as... Oh, <laughs> I prepared ahead of time, and now I'm like, oh, where's my German accent? Uh, Der Schwingend Stern. I don't know if that's any good. All I really know how to say in German is, Ich habe eine Kartoffel. And anyone who knows any German knows it's not very useful saying. Um, uh, and then the other thing, it's also known as the Silent Star, which I actually don't understand. I I don't I don't know <laughs> what that means. <laughs> I don't know if that's another version, like because contextually in 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 the film I don't know what that can mean. Anyway, so for Spaceship on Venus, this is set in 1985. Remember, this is from 1960, so it's supposed to be 25 years into their future, uh, where space travel is possible, <laughs> uh, and they find they find something. Uh, I don't know how that they know it's from Venus, but they find something, they think it's from Venus, they know it's from Venus, and they go to set off to explore, uh, you know, its origins. So that's a pretty cool premise. I actually had no idea this was German. The When I pulled it off the list, the cast name member they have on the back is Yoko Tani, so I thought it would be a Japanese film. There is, she is in the film, and she is Japanese. Um, but it's actually got quite a multicultural cast for a 1960s German film. I was like, this is pretty progressive, and there's even an inference to an interracial relationship, and I was like, rock on! So I was pretty impressed with that. Um, and it has the sort of, uh, it has one of the vibes that I like, and and you know, now we see them almost as a, o almost only as a montage in a way of a sort of getting the gang together, um, you know, because it has a team, a big multicultural team of, I guess it would be an international team, would be how it would be thought of then, more of, um, of you know, scientists and experts and robotics, because and, you need robots in space. Um, and, and that kind of stuff. So it pulls all these people together to uh, go off to check out Venus. And it was a really cool feeling about it in terms of, you know, like, it kind of felt like space travel was pretty well established. And I think there was a, like, a station, a lunar station that they c kept checking in on and stuff. I didn't understand how any of it worked. I don't think you're supposed to. Actually, that's one of the weird things about science fiction films is that usually it's really easy to place, oh, you know, they everyone thought that we would be living in space or have robot servants and all that stuff, but nobody would think we would have anything different than a telephone. <laughs> so it's like we, but th so usually there's some kind of big marker in older science fiction movies that you, it really places it in its time, whether, you know, but this one didn't really have that. It felt pretty progressive and, you know, visionary in that sense, like it really felt well-rounded, um, with the exception of some of the terms, I think often they called the computer the electronic brain, um, and referred to the fact that, this was actually really interesting culturally, they ref referred to the computer as being able to do something, or comp not compute, but just be able to do the task that no human could, um, and I think we, I think that really was sort of how people felt about computers up until recently. And it's not like computers can't do things that we can't do, but w it used to just be thinking of they could do them faster or easier. And I think now people don't think about it very much. <laughs> like, I just don't, like, that's not an issue on our mind. It's such a part of most, a lot of people's everyday culture that you don't even think about, you know, that the computer can do something you can't. 
which is weird, you know, it's really weird. Anyway, I love things like that. That's one of the reasons I love, love, love science fiction, is it makes me think about the world. Um, but this movie, I felt like I was kind of like sort of like half in, half out on this one because like I thought it was well done and had an interesting idea and I liked the cast and you know, it, but it, and it had a bit of an eerie tone to it, not cre not not scary too much, but just a bit of an eerie tone. But it was very serious. Um, but then you know when you have things like some of the science stuff where you're like, oh, you know, we don't do that anymore, or you know, differences where, nor, you know, in a lot of older movies you can laugh or joke. It didn't have a sort of campy feel at all. It was very serious. But there were some, some of the setting type stuff and that really killed, like, there was a stu some that I was like, oh my god, the people, I don't know how many gamers are out there, how many p people played World of Warcraft, but there was some stuff that looks like Zangamarsh. And I'm like, it just, it just, that kind of broke me out of it and made me feel campy. Although, of course, World of Ra Warcraft is newer than first spaceship on Venus, it's like, oh my god, it's Sangamars, like, it was just, like, so much like it, I don't know if they use that for its inspiration, or if it's just a very typical setting-ish to use that feels different, so, but I was, that it made me smile, um, but the film isn't campy in that way, so it's just kind of funny, so it was great to get the change of pace a bit, but, you know, you weren't supposed to be laughing, <laughs> it's supposed to be serious, and they did have a fair amount of, sort of, robotic, you know, ish things and a little rover thing and, you know, the, the small computers and I'm trying to understand. And that's actually one of the things I liked about this because it was from the perspective of trying to understand. You know, we found this thing. What is it? You know, where does it come from? Who does it come from? What are they like? Like, it's very sort of more like exploratory and the and curious as opposed to you know, you know, peril and stuff like that. Like, there's conflict and, you know, terror and ish stuff, but it's more, it starts from the perspective of wanting to understand. So it was cool. So it was weird because, like, in a lot of ways, this is exactly what I was looking for for this series. But just right now, I'm kind of like, I would just really would have loved a bit more of a campier movie. <laughs> like, I just really would have loved something just a little sillier. I don't know. So, I don't know. I wasn't expecting something so cerebral, but I did appreciate it, and it definitely is science fiction. There is no question. This is totally exactly what I thought sort of like 95% of the movies in this collection would be, and it turns out it's being sort of more like 5 to 10%. Now, I did look. I had a, the past couple films have all not been science fiction, but overall, I think it's still about two-thirds science fiction and one-third not, you know, so that's not bad. I won't know until the very end, you know, because it's two-thirds at, you know, two-fifths of watching, but uh, I'm keeping track. I, I, I point to my brain, but I have a spreadsheet which can do things that I cannot do. <laughs> no, I can just do them faster and easier. I don't know. That, the whole computer stuff is really making me think, because it really, because I was like, oh yeah, like when I watched science fiction movies in the 80s, that's how we felt. Yes, this computer can do that. We cannot do that. We cannot do it as fast as that. You know, and, and as a, you know, but I don't think we think about it anymore. You know, I don't. I don't know. Do you? Let me know. Ah, until then, we're going to see what's next. See what movie, what film, what sci-fi, oops, this, uh-oh, oh, I have two. Okay, I'm putting them both back. Starting again. Reset. Reset. <laughs> One. Okay. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. It's upside down. Unknown World from 1951 with Bruce Kellogg. Yay! Unknown World. That sounds like it could be science fiction, eh? I think there is a high, a high likelihood. And that's uh, awesome. And I actually, when I was looking up for Spaceship on Venus, I did notice that it was um, originally shown as a triple bill with um, Warning from Space, which is one of the ones I have already reviewed. And that, I think that would have been funny. I can't remember. The third one I wasn't familiar with. So, but it was just kind of cool to see them sort of bring it all together. I forgot to check if it's public domain. I would be very surprised if it isn't. Um, for Spaceship on Venus, and as always, if the films are public domain, I put the link to the archive um, website, the Internet Archive website, where you can watch it uh, online. So, all right, for Spaceship on Venus, done. Next, Unknown World. This is good. I like it. Thanks for watching.
Oops, wrong hand. Oh my goodness, my computer setup is a little oh, wonky. <laughs> Where's the stop button? <laughs> Using my wrong hand on the mouse. There we go.